This isn't going to be perfect, but if I blow some air here, you should see the plunger come out and it's going to push this that way. See that happening. You know, it's pretty hard to visualize what's going on inside any of these control bodies with all these valves and springs and everything moving around. So what I did is I made a uh, cutaway here of the accumulator body to help explain how the line pressure modulator works and also the accumulator. I'll, I'll do that on, uh, on a different video. I'll explain how the accumulator valves work. But for this one, I'm doing uh, the line pressure modulator. So just a quick overview on this valve body. It is a valve body. Um, it's just, you know, we tend to refer to the main valve body as the valve body and this is the accumulator body. So the parts of the line pressure modulator are, we have this, the aluminum sleeve. Inside of it is the plunger. The plunger pushes against this, this cap. And we have two springs in parallel here. We have the large thin one and then there's the, the smaller diameter, heavier spring there. And that pushes up against the valve here. Now when the valve is being applied in the other direction, via modulated line pressure, it's not experiencing the outer spring, it's only experiencing the heavier inner spring. Now by the way, when you're rebuilding these, and you, you, know, you put your accumulator, you go around, you know, you're snapping all your valves, making sure everything's returning back to its at rest state, and you get to the line pressure modulator, and it doesn't return, and you think, oh man, I screwed something up. Well no, you didn't. That's totally normal. The reason for that I was looking at the cutaway here. There's a gap here of where there's no spring contact up against this valve. So we can push it about mm, an eighth, a little over an eighth, eh, about an eighth, I guess, before it makes contact with that inner spring. So right there, that's our total movement without, without uh, any spring resistance. That's because this is a modulated valve. Now, what does modulated mean? Well, modulation is any kind of throttling. In our transmissions, we have electrical modulation via the pulse width modulated solenoids. We have two in the 4R100. We got the one for the torque converter clutch, and we have another one for the EPC, electronic pressure control solenoid. Both of those are pulse width modulated. That means they can be open anywhere from zero to 100%. It's whatever the computer tells it to do. This is a mechanical modulator. Um, so it's done by springs, valves, and two opposing pressures. So what are, our, what are our opposing pressures? Well, on this end, it's EPC. So if you see this little hole here, EPC pressure, which is computer controlled, that pressure comes in this little this little hole here, and that's what pushes the plunger that way. On the other end, we have modulated line pressure. So what happens in here is we have four ports. We have one port here, two, three, and four. The unmodulated line pressure, which comes directly from the pump, that that goes everywhere. Um, that line pressure from the pump, it goes to almost every valve. There's only a couple valves that doesn't. And then it comes into this modulation valve. Now this modulation valve produces the modulated pressure and that pressure only goes to the accumulators. No other valve sees modulated line pressure other than the accumulators. So what we have here, the flow path is the line pressure comes into this port. Now you can see when this valve is at rest that this port is connected to this port. Here's our valve here. The other possible connections when this valve is moved to the right is that the line valve, the line port is shut off and the modulation port is connected to this port which is just a dump. That's just an exhaust port. It gets tied into a whole bunch of other ports and eventually makes its way down to the, down to the pan. So what happens here? Well, we have two pressures fighting each other. Like I said, the EPC comes in this end. It, it applies 
uh, the plunger in there applies a force against this spring which wants to push this valve to the we can't really call them open and shut what we can call them is uh, max pressure and min pressure so max pressure is right now all of the line pressure is being channeled right into the modulated port so what that does that port goes right to the accumulators it goes back to these ports back here on the backs of the back end of the accumulators um, I'll get deeper into that later but let's see I have a uh, if you look at the orifice plate because there's orificing in action here you can look at where these orifices all line up and you can tell like what's connected to what via the worm tracks under the accumulator and also the case but basically we have line coming in now that that hole that orifice there lines up right here and then we have modulated line pressure here which lines up to this and in the case not here this this orifice and this orifice are jumped together and this orifice lines up to this track here which connects to this accumulator and now the case does the rest of the work where it connects the other orifices to uh to bring modulated line pressure to the backs of these these other accumulators so it's just a interesting thing to do if you if you look at your your uh, orifice plate and where those orifices are up against the accumulator as well as the case and you can you can get an idea for where things are routed so what happens inside here well this pressure wants to push this valve this way now this lot this modulated line pressure is also looped back against this piston here on the back end so it's all that's what's giving this resistance so if this modulated line pressure exceeds what our EPC force being applied well this this valve is going to go that way and it's going to dump some modulated pressure off into the into the exhaust port and then it's going to this valve will slide back to the left and it'll reconnect the line pressure to the modulated line pressure port and this this is how it's modulated this valve does this all day long it probably never stops moving now when we're talking about firming up shifts what we're talking about is pushing this valve to the left now there's two way to two ways to do that we can do it mechanically in here with springs and valving and I'll show you that in a second or we can do it electronically if you have a good tuner who knows what he's doing these guys like to mess with the with the line pressures if you have a good tuner they'll always ask you if you have a built transmission or you know pressure mods in the transmission and that's why I always tell my customers you know whether they do or don't have pressure mods in their transmission so they can pass that information along to their tuner if they ever get to that point so what he can do he can increase the EPC pressure and apply a, a greater force against this spring which pushes the valve that way or we can do it with a larger diameter plunger so let's take a look at these uh, let's take a look at these plungers and see what we got for options here we have five different line pressure modulators the four in the back, these are the typical sizes that are widely available in the aftermarket from Sonax. Uh, Transgo makes a few. But from left to right, this is smallest to largest. This is the 331. This is a 0.331 inch diameter plunger. This is what you would find factory for the v, for the 5.4 uh, trucks. Next size up, 372. This was the OEM plunger for the V10s and the 7.3s. These next two sizes, these are aftermarket. This is the 427. This is probably the most popular, uh, po most popular diameter. This is this will give you a firm shift that you'll you'll definitely notice. This next one, this is the 500. 
This will probably give you some hellacious shifts. I've never put one in a transmission. I didn't buy that one. It came to me from a uh, from a core that I tore down. I'm sure there's a use case for that. I don't know what it would be. Probably not for any of my customers, but maybe uh, you know, racing applications, something like that, might have a use for that. The factory Ford ones, they're all aluminum, just like this. Uh, no O-ring machined in them. These three over here, these are aftermarket. They tend to be steel, and they have a uh, an O-ring machined in the in the outboard end of them. That's for uh, pressure leaks leaking out of the the accumulator. This one on the front here, this is the one we make. This is uh, this is an in-between size. I always felt that the 427 was a little too firm and the 372 was a little too soft. So I came up with a size through a bunch of experimentation for what I think is gonna uh, is gonna work for everybody. Uh, pretty soon they're gonna be in all of our builds. As soon as I get a machine shop on the line that uh, can be reliable enough to pump these things out for me. All right, back to the model here. So we can see when, uh, as we increase the, as we increase the diameter of that piston, we increase the force applied against these springs. So just by blowing air in here, you can see what's going on there. The plunger comes out, it's pushing this spring cap and it's compressing both of those springs. But when I push back, I'm only, uh, the valve is only acting against the one inner spring. So when I'm really on it with the pressure, I mean, I, I can barely move that. And I mean, I'm dealing with a lot of leaks here with my nozzle and everything, but it's going it, to, it's going to, there's a lot of push pull going on there. <clears throat> so that's basically it. Uh, two opposing pressures throttling this, this valve between this port and this port or this port and this port and that's all that's all this is it's it's a matter of where do you want that valve to sit and how much pressure is it going to allow to get to your accumulators and the more pressure the firmer the shift